Hey folks, so I still have to do the door frame, I gotta do the trim, I gotta do the window sill, but my studio is basically complete. Yeah! Our old guest room. Can't believe it was like this at one point. And you might be wondering, how did it go from this to this? I used a hammer. So this being my wife and I's first home, I've never actually done renovations to this extent before. I've done some small jobs here and there, but nothing where I'm smashing those walls down and building them up again. Now, we're both pretty busy people. We both work full time. We have a toddler running around. We have two dogs. They're a handful. So it did take a couple months to get all the work here done. Although, between you and me, my wife got a room upstairs out of this whole deal. I'm relegated to the basement. Who won? By the way, if you like this kind of content, maybe leave a comment down below. I know it's different than my usual painting stuff, but I figured I'd try something new. Once I had ripped down the ceiling and walls, I found that there was no insulation on the outside walls, although there was on the inside walls, which seems kind of unnecessary to me. I also found that the studs on the outside walls were not deep enough to actually install insulation. So I went out and bought some strips of wood, screwed it onto the existing studs, and then installed some new insulation. It was looking nice. At that point, it was pretty straightforward. We brought in some drywall, we hung it up, we did some mudding, taping, sanding, and it was ready for paint. I decided to just go with the same gray-blue paint that we have in the rest of our house. It looks nice and modern, and it photographs really cleanly. Man, it's hot in here. So it's time to think about the flooring. And while it's nice to have a nice thick carpet to walk on, the thing about a hobby room is you're dropping little bits on the ground, you're spilling paint and maybe some chemicals. It just didn't seem right. So instead, I decided to install some LVT flooring. It looks clean, it's easy to clean, and it looks modern too. The best part is it's super easy to install. Something really important for a hobby room is lighting. I did some shopping around and I ended up getting super lucky and found this nice lighting rack at a used furniture store in town. It cost me 10 bucks, it spreads perfectly across the entire room and just lights it up beautifully. I love it. At this point I was coming off vacation from my job and the room was in a pretty usable state so I just wanted to get in there. I'd finish the windowsill and door frame later. Speaking of work, I work in IT and I sit in a desk all day long. I knew that I wanted in my hobby room a sit-stand desk so that I wasn't going from one chair to another chair at the end of the day. So. I ordered one up. I was super excited for my new desk to arrive. I was checking the tracking every day and then boom, the day is supposed to show up. I look outside and it's pouring rain out. The delivery driver is pulling the box out of the back of the truck. <laughs> the box falls open, the desk flies out and it hits the road. Awesome! I pulled the sopping wet and muddy box into our house and did some inspections. The desk was mostly okay, except for a nice crack in the one corner on the underside. I told myself, whatever, I need to get going. It'll be on the underside of the desk. Nobody will know except for me and you, I guess. Once I had the desk installed, it was looking beautiful. It was time to set up the rest of the room. So here's how the room turned out. It's only about 11 feet by 11 and a half feet or so, but I think I did really well with the space. I managed to fit everything in here that I need and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I could use some more storage and that's something that I'll probably look at in the future. But for right now, I think it looks good. So let's take a quick look at how I set up the room. This is my 3D printing corner. It used to be a closet, but I decided to leave it open so it's more usable and accessible to me. Something I'll be looking at in the future is installing some better ventilation, but for now, the window will remain open, the door will be closed, and my prints will run overnight so that I am not breathing in any harmful resin fumes. Those of you that have watched my channel before may be familiar with my display cabinets. They're quite vintage, but they do what they need to do. In the future, I might look at upgrading them to something a little more modern, but for now, they do their job and they fit in the space. Beauty. This is my work work desk. It's where I do my day job and spend a lot of my time, honestly. Our house isn't massive, so it had to go somewhere. So it made sense to put it in my studio. Not much else to say about that. Moving on. This is my new sit-stand desk. <laughs> I set it up so that the left hand side is dedicated to computer related things such as editing videos, doing graphic design and uploading stuff to YouTube. And the right side of my desk is dedicated to painting. Right next to the sit stand desk, I have a little side desk. It's storing all of my paints, my toolbox, my compressor, my airbrush. I have a little hanger with paper towel there. 
basically has everything I'm gonna need in the middle of a painting session. Above the side desk, I have some floating shelves. That's where I'm storing rattle cans and varnishes and water and any other chemicals I might need. I even managed to fit a little basket up there which has some other things like a headlamp, some protective glasses and other little bits and bobs. Underneath the side desk, I have a storage solution. I really like these multi-tiered plastic bins, especially the ones on wheels. They're super useful just to store an assortment of things. Currently, they're storing things such as airbrush supplies, hot glue guns, basing materials, my extra bits, a magnifying headlamp, all kinds of things that are super useful in the hobby and I didn't have any other place for. Lastly, I have one more classic storage tower. It contains a lot of my unpainted but assembled miniatures. I have it all labeled so I know where everything is and when I get some inspiration, I can just grab something and get right to it. And that's about it. What do you think about my new hobby room? What would you have done differently? How's yours set up? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like or dislike if you didn't like the video. Subscribe if you wanna see more. And again, I really appreciate you watching. All feedback is super appreciated. And again, paint today for better tomorrow. Thanks, bye. Mudding, taping, painting, blah, blah, blah. Do, 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 da, 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 hoo, da, hoo. Ha, 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 he, he, ha, 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 